Establish regular meetings, senior meeting. District monitor enforcement group. So it matches the state enforcement. Has that been yet? I don't I don't think that's been set yet. I don't think that's right. It hasn't been set yet. I'm not sure if it's gonna stay over the term. Does um, the state change that during the year? I'm trying to talk to you. Those are the items under the consent and specifically the resolutions that are part of the consent agenda items. And 
there's been a discussion on here and a motion to approve the agenda and the Senate amendment. I so move. So, move and second to uh, approve the consent agenda and discussion. All in favor, raise right hand. Put us in the sign. Six up. Our uh, next item is patron comments. Scholarship committee. Barb was there last year. That's not a very high uh, rank. Thank you. Uh, Carol. Carol. Appointment to 
South Central District Special Ed. I continue to serve on that. It's not the end of that. And we'll be an alternate. And filled in a couple times for me. So did Baker give her Carol since she was your alternate? He'd be the alternate. No, but last year when I was filling. Well, we worked pretty hard. Officers for free and reduced is Dr. Kenworthy. Appointment for food services is Dr. Kenworthy. Appointment for papers represents Joanne and Dr. Kenworthy. Appointment to the local for PDC. Carolyn, have you served on that before? Or? <laughs> Usually there's not, but it's kind of up to a board member. Some, some people are a lot more political, uh, activated, activist. Well, some of us get more political. And then mean we have to have a, we have to, some people are fine to do that if they wish, but if they want to continue with that, that's fine. for that and then I would entertain a motion to approve the uh, 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 appointed people to these uh, positions. Also we move uh, second seconded to approve the appointed positions. Uh, all in favor right hand close that sign thank you very much. Establish regular board of education meeting dates and time. That's number two there. Um, as you look at that list, the very first date is a conflict with me. August the first. That's my annual vocational meeting. All the board have conflict. I would like to move to August be to, on this right here to August the eighth.
back in town Thursday or Friday that week. Uh, like, so, like, Thursday is fine. Thursday, uh, what is that? Four. Thursday be the fourth. Fourth? Thursday the fourth would work. For me. Is that any problem with anybody? Thursday the fourth work? No. Normally, or is to have the first Monday of the month. Uh, there are conferences. November the 14th, we'll notice that one. Dr. Tim will be the other conference. That's why I think we're doing the 14th, so he's back there. <laughs> okay. I would entertain a motion to approve the meeting dates and time. This person on there will be approved for the meeting dates and times at the meeting. So, move. I move a second to approve the regular board registration meeting dates and times as uh, presented here with the noted adjustment. All those in favor, right hand. Those in time, say so. Petty cash limits. Uh, student activity petty cash fund 15, and these are the same as last year. And, uh, administration recommends that we approve uh, these as brief. Second. We'll move the second to approve the petty cash limits as presented. All in favor, right hand. Those the same side, say so. Banking designation. Oh yeah, the uh, the banks, as you know, the uh, the banks uh, <coughs> rotate, and the uh, general fund is at St. John National Bank, the activity account for the American State Bank, and the CDs are at the bank. That's fine. I believe that's right. Is that, did I say that right? Um, we used to rotate. That. We used to rotate. That. Uh, yeah, that's my point. Auditor, we used to rotate. auditor recommended that we not. So now we. Keep each of those funds, Mr. Brady mentioned, at those designated banks. That's why we have actually all of them designated as our banks, because we do have funds held in all of them. So. And we each year need to make sure that we approve them as designated financial institutions. National Bank, American State Bank, as USD uh, 350, for USD 350 funds. All in favor, right hand. Those same signs. So. Um, auditorium seat renovation. Over to the okay. Auditorium seat, yes. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and let Dr. Kennedy work on it. We'll let you explain that. Well, this is a project that we have been looking at for several years, um, <clears throat> and this may be uh, a little more difficult than some of the other we looked at. We passed and looked at the uh, prospect of taking all of the other seats out and replacing them with like used theater seats or something like that. Um, this is an option that allows us to keep the existing seats and still add padding to them. Um, we get people in and try them out, they're not too bad. Um, uh, it also doesn't require that we have to take uh, the main part of the seat out, you just unbolt the back and um, that part, and basically it's like a slip cover. And it goes down over, velcros at the bottom, and then the original screws go right back in, so it's pretty slick. Um, it would also uh, come in a lot of different types of fabrics, and there's also samples in here. So if we were to pursue this, we would need to have someone with more designer flair than I have to pick out fabric. But, um, 
one of the other parts. Um, adding these on does make the seat more comfortable to sit in with the padding. One of the other issues that is frequently brought up about the theater seats is the leg room. And so the other part of the proposal would be that we would re remove um, three, possibly four rows, and then respace them. So it would add about three inches of leg space. Um, I think we can do it with just three rows, but we'd have to see once we don't even get through it. So one row uh, down the center is about 13 seats. So if we remove three, we can use about 39 seats. Uh, also, we would propose that we not uh, change the distances on the side seats, at least at this time. Very seldom do we use the side seats. So um, see how, how this works out and find it to be uh, a good change and we can go ahead and do the rest of them. It's $42 for the two parts per chair. So if we did, um, if we did remove uh, about 40 or 50 seats out of there, we'd be looking at somewhere around $14,000 uh, to do all of them. And we wouldn't have to do all of them. Again, we could just do the ones down in the center if we wanted to leave the sides the way they currently are, uh, which would reduce the cost a little bit more. Is there some? Have you talked to anyone about making a donation or private money who's going towards this project? We do have a couple of donations already um, for uh, projects in the auditorium, They're not specifically uh, designated for this, but it's just something in the auditorium. Um, it's not a real large amount at this point. between the two that are combined, but it's something that, you know, if we were to make it public in the community, they might be interested in taking part in it, so. Well, I, I had talked to an individual about this, and uh, they thought that maybe at the end of the summer or something, maybe we might be at a point where they were going to come in and talk to oh, someone okay. at the school about it. So what is there about three hours to um, there's about, uh, after we removed three or four rows, there would be about 340 seats, 350 total, total. How many do you Ah, that's not the only thing I can remember. All I can remember is that there's 13 seats per row. Uh, I want to say that there's... 15 rows. So, well, Rita, why don't you run up there? Right <laughs> uh, at what point does uh, the FME ADA compliance with you? We already have made a compliance um, at some point in the somewhat recent past. They removed, I think, a whole row in the front. And so that's where the ADA seating is. Um, but we could do some additional. Especially down front because we just don't use those side seats very much. Um, but we currently we do provide that for people down there. Are there times during the year when there is a full house in the auditorium? Um, the closest that we've come to that is the musical for the last two years. Um, and even then, uh, the part that was full was just the center section off the side. Uh, and it wasn't. Probably, you know, about 40, 50 yeah. short. Yeah. I don't know that I've seen it. I, I've been 12 years, I'm not sure if I've been full very. Is it sooner if you've seen it full for a long time? No. May I make a comment? Yes. Several times this year I've had to take a chair in for large people to sit in because they can't fit in these chairs. So could we make a section for chairs? Well, or so that we can move a chair in as right. needed. And that's what I was talking about down in the front rows. We could remove another one of those short rows down there to be. They don't want to go down front and sit. Oh. They want something in the back. Like oh, really? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we could do the same thing in back. I think, uh, Just I remove a row on the side or something. Yeah. I don't know. 
just a thought. Uh, those side seats get used very, very, very rarely. Yeah, and we have some large people that just cannot sit in that room. So. to want to move forward with this and we go ahead and contact the, the upholstery company that does these and have them start manufacturing them. Um, and it will take a little time if we probably have our custodial staff and go ahead and do like a row at a time and we have a little bit of downtime. Um, but we don't have a production there until November. So we have a little time. I should say, uh, make note, this is not one of the chairs uh, actually out of the auditorium. It looks a little beat up. This is one of the ones, uh, the extra one that sits on, on the top row in the south gym. Uh, some of the chairs they took out how many years ago when they created kind of an ADA area down front. So, Are those rows, are they individual chairs or are they tied together? They're all locked together. I mean, you can take them apart, uh, like if you wanted to have, for example, uh, if you wanted to remove an end, you could do that and still have the next seat that's still be one full seat. Um, it's just whatever part you take out is not a full seat. I was thinking the end chair, if you take the side off, then a large person could sit on the end and hang over. Yeah, um, there's nothing to support them if they do that. You know, they have to decide. So. Is there a way to on the aisle and move take one row of seats going down and just move the end down and then you can put a chair at the end of those? One thing, I mean, because we do have extra chairs, I and mean, the one thing that we could maybe experiment with is uh, removing uh, this arm and actually tying two seats together. something like that, make it kind of like a love seat sort of thing. It's, as long as it has this lower frame here for support, the arm is actually uh, not so Yeah. Well, that's kind of where it ties together, though. Yeah, now you have to you take it this over. part out you here. You have to figure out another way for it to tie together. together. No, just take yeah. this part off. We have to put a padding or something yeah. on there, but it would allow yeah. them to have it. Allowed to have extra space on the side. One at each, like on the side, just one less side to a chair on the rear of it. You can have to climb over a person who may sit on the end. Yeah. But you don't put them in until they request them.
people do not have to vote tonight, but if you could give us some sense or consensus, um, if we can just talk to the people to let them know that it's something we're looking at moving forward with, or if they have somebody start looking at fabric samples to fix some of that, uh, and then make an official decision in August. I kind of like the idea of what we did before. seats in the center section minus three or four rows and see what that cost is and talk to them. And, you know, they may want to have something to say about they want the opportunity to pick fabric to the game yeah. or something. Yeah. If we're just looking at down the center, I, I do know there'd be less than less than ten thousand dollars just based on because there's um, there's six seats on each side row so there's just about as many seats on the side row as but I'd, I'd like to give so, uh, those people the opportunity to sure. discuss what they would like to do too on the yeah. side. whether it's the whole thing or the center yeah. So are you thinking that we should wait, or should we approach them? That's what I don't know. I... How long does it take for that company to do the project? Uh, it kind of depends. Um, uh, actually, it may be easier time frame wise once school starts. The company that makes these, um, they upholster bus seats. That's their main occupation. But they also do theater seats. And um, they were the company that went in and we did all of the seats in the Grand Ole Opry after it got flooded. So I mean, they're a very reputable company. But their, their bread and butter is bus seats. Uh, the way in which you get this one sample back and forth is we call it to Yoder. Uh, just south of Yoder, there's uh, white manufacturing. They do bus seats there. They load it on their truck and they send it to Ohio. And they do it back there and they send it back. And so they would be done in Ohio. They ship to Yoder and we pick them up there. So well, what, their, what their big push effort is right here in the summer. So once school starts, they pay for them. But so. well, if I talk to the individuals and come back next month or at them if they're ready to do something they can come in and talk to them. Okay. you guys go for that. We are in the preliminary stages of building our budget. Um, don't have enough to really give you a whole lot yet. As in the next week, probably it will firm up quite a bit, and I will send information out to you with what those numbers are looking like. 
Um, the way time frame wise it'll probably work out is that the board will review it at the August uh, meeting. We'll have to look at that. Let's have it change that. Because it has to be published uh, for 10 days after you've reviewed it. And then we would have the hearing. Um, but we'll see how that progresses. The most significant thing about building the budget uh, that we always wait to see is what happens to our sex valuation. Um, it has bounced up and down pretty dramatically the last couple of years. Uh, we kind of halfway expected to see it jump up um, because of what um, oil prices have done, uh, but it actually stayed just almost perfectly flat. I think it only went up about $600 from last year. So um, that would mean that we expect the oil rates to be pretty close to the same as last year. So. Added agenda items. Chair, teacher, teacher, teacher agreements. We'll approve um, a reassuming shared teacher with uh, Stafford and some general. And then Kim Bolger, counselor. Stafford and some general. I would entertain a motion to approve those teacher agreements. Did everybody have a chance to see those at the percent of the year? Nothing different. You know, we've done in the past, they're the same. Are there any other in the works? Right now, there's not. There was one other one, but it's kind of on hold because she's in the hospital. Senior science teacher, and uh, so that one we're going to just build the stuff right now. Uh, we're waiting to see what action Stafford does with those, so, but we do have arrangements for that position. But these short teacher agreements are one too. They move and second to approve the shared teacher agreements. Any further discussions? All in favor, right hand. Yeah. the same sign. So seven. Communications. What we do on this each month uh, for the new board members. Uh, if you've attended an activity like a uh, special meeting, uh, working concert, meetings at the uh, puts on, uh, you might attend, or you might spend some uh, school function or something you want to report on a uh, meeting. And if it's the time to do the next that report, or if you talk to the legislative person or something, you talk about those things as it relates to school activities. Uh, and I'll start. I'm a member of the, as you saw before, seems to be run really since Brian, uh, or Brian's last night, Cunningham, Cunningham has, has just done a tremendous job in working to smooth the feathers there. Um, it's, a, it's an operation I don't wish on anybody, but Brian does it really good job. There's about 125 employees in that particular co-op, and uh, Paris are coming and going. They hired, most of the Paris are hired to them. I would say half a dozen to a dozen each month. 
Yeah, there's about 125 certified employees. There's another couple hundred classified employees with all the parents. So it's a it's a large operation. Very large. Uh, it's all it's the special ed money just flowed through here, it goes down there, and uh, so they gave back part of the money this year. I forget how much that was. Plus, it's about 11000 11000 yeah, back. So that's kind of a big deal. But, uh, they do watch their fees and fees. How much money went down? Um, out of our general fund budget, uh, I believe it was 143000 That's not, isn't the sum total of what we passed through? Oh, that's, just that, that's just out of our general fund. What comes through from the state is three hundred and forty-eight thousand. I think. Yeah, it's a, the two combined is a huge amount. But just out of our funds, I think it's like one hundred forty-three. What uh, changes? Well, well, there were several good. factors. Uh, one of the big things was is that uh, there was uh, a large contingency that just kind of differed with the philosophy of uh, how funds are being used and not. Uh, and what complicates the whole thing is that there are several districts that are really struggling financially and had to make cuts and couldn't get the teachers' new raises. So it's kind of hard line. And there's some districts that can give a little more than what we could. We're kind of middle of the road uh, type of a district. And I think they were holding the line pretty tight down there. And you have to stop and think uh, most of those 125 employees are specialists. And so you stop and think about uh, those specialists, they're usually paid a little bit And I think there was. So they drain the fund. They can't pay it. And, and some of the teachers think that they have all that in reserve. They should be paying that out. Now that's part of their loss. Not really. It's just being very discreet with the funds that they have. And uh, I applaud Brian for practicing this with the other so There were some people on the side for very long. Through that, things just seem to be going much smoother. Uh, so, it's, it, if you ever want to go to one of those, just let me know. It's a little long. It's kind of interesting. You sit in front of all the superintendents. Yeah. I, I think about these other around, you know. <laughs> uh, what is there? Well, over 13 years. There's 14 school districts. 14 school districts. So, there's 14 of us. School representative, that's 14 superintendents sitting behind you. Not all of them, but majority. Interesting way that that particular board member. Uh, the chairman of that board is uh, from South Carolina High School. Sports. Yeah, camp sports. So that's my report. Mr. Bergen. Giveaway. And 1.3 million in 
Uh, the administrative reports. I don't have anything for your work for my building. Everything's running smoothly in July. So, in all of them, in all of Yeah, in all we're coming along for a moment. We'll find out next month how the moment yeah. goes. Yeah. I don't have anything new, just preparing for enrollment and preparing to get into the office and I'll be scheduling one-on-one -on -one meetings with all of the elementary teachers and staff before our work days and before school starts. I'd like to have individual conversations with everybody um, before we really get into the swing of things with children in the building. Um, I'm excited to, to start the job and Mr. Bergen has been very kind and gracious and, and is going to show me the ins and outs of a lot of computer program data exciting stuff as he says so um, I appreciate the opportunity and and I'm ready to welcome aboard thank you I have uh, one a few things just to update for one um, you were talking about special ed we actually do have a new district joining the special ed co op and that's Lewis uh, I'm not exactly sure if they joined independently I think they do they came in though because of their partnership with Maxville. Uh, they currently, or previously were getting served through Triplanes or something like that, Larned and it's up in that area uh, because all their kids basically were attending, uh, upper level kids were attending Maxville and decided it would be better to try to go that way. So, um, Other things that are going on, uh, in the month of July, uh, in terms of projects, we're going to be very busy. Um, we still have a representative from the Missouri company on the wind power who's supposed to be coming out to do a site analysis. Um, we're scheduled to have the uh, fence around the practice field uh, replaced here soon. Uh, carpets in the high school office and the junior high computer lab will be replaced. Uh, windows in the art room. Uh, we'll get a similar treatment to what some of the other windows did last uh, summer. I think these are just about the last of the single pane windows that we have, so we'll be replaced with some thermal windows. Uh, the uh, ceiling mount volleyball system uh, has arrived. Uh, we're still waiting for the installer to get here. He was actually supposed to be here today, but got delayed in Texas, so um, we're going to be looking at how to schedule him in around the floors being refinished Friday and Saturday uh, and then the new uh, gym seats will be arriving the first week in August and be installed the second week in August. So um, if you haven't been around there recently you might go wandering in there it looks pretty big because uh, all the seats are out. Uh, they just about have all the iron buttered up to go to Great Bend, so uh, we'll see how that works. Um, uh, we were talking about enrollment um, last 
Friday, I think it was, um, I took a family around uh, that are from Great Bend um, who are planning on rolling their kids down here uh, this fall uh, because they like the size of our classes uh, and the classes where the kids would be in Great Bend would be in classes of like 120 kids per class. Uh, they like the idea of the smaller schools, so they're going to bring their kids out here. So, um, and I know of at least a couple other families who have kids that are uh, have moved, either moved into the area or things like that. So I don't know. We'll see where we're at at the moment. But uh, uh, that was kind of kind of fun to take them around and you know, hear some of their horror stories about what a large school can be like. Um, quick update: um, Jeanette and Squee, who does our family consumer science. Uh, has had a great past week, has made some really good progress. Um, she still uh, will need to have a, uh, a surgery to correct the issue that caused her to have this problem in the first place, and she'll have some uh, rehabilitation after that. Um, we do have uh, plans in place for someone who's certified to come in and cover that for us until she can come back. Uh, but we're just uh, we're thankful that she is making some good progress. And then, um, I don't know if this is public knowledge or not about Carolyn's. I think it's okay to say that. Carolyn Dixon's husband um, was did they life fighting? Yes, they went to Wichita. To the Kansas he had, Heart Hospital. Yeah, he had a heart attack, I guess, today, but they life fighting mm -hmm. down there and got him there quick enough. You know, he didn't have any of the damage that he can have, so he's, he's doing really well. They put a stamp in, and, and yeah, yeah, he's doing well. So. This meeting we will have have the uh, the library budget. Also, we will have that to review uh, in addition to the district budget. I uh, I mentioned to you those new board members that we have items that you think ought to be offered on the agenda. Make sure you stop in the district office.